Let's take a look at how to create a self-checking activity from a PDF um, of a material that you already have um, available to you. So here I am in Active Inspire, and students for this uh, activity, they're able to um, go over to the side and get the pen tool, write down their answer um, in each of the blanks, um, and then they're able to press a button and it reveals the correct answer. Once they've um, checked their work, then they can reset the page and another student or group of students can come to the board and work on this activity. This is very simple to set up, so let's get started. To get started, all I do is I go to File, and I'm going to go down to Import, and I want to follow that over and go to Import PDF. And I've already got the PDF on my desktop that I want to bring in. So you're just going to navigate to the PDF that you want to bring in. In this case, it's called Dot Plot. And I'm going to go ahead and open. It's going to ask me what size and whatever um, I want the PDF to be. You don't even have to mess with that. You can just hit Import. And it will bring in uh, your PDF um, as an image. If you have multiple pages on your PDF, it will bring in each page as a different flip chart page. Um, in this case, I want to zoom in a little bit. I don't need this name at the top, so I'm going to resize this image. I've got my select tool, which is the arrow tool from my toolbar, and I'm going to move um, the top of my page up to um, the top of Active Inspire and I'm going to click on the image and in the bottom right hand corner I'm going to use the bounding box the marquee handle to um, drag um, to the bottom right so that I've got my image resized um, so that it's as big as it could possibly be. It's just easier for students to see. Once I have that um, arranged on my flip chart page, I can right click on it and lock that image in place. I'm in presentation mode up here at the top. My uh, blue snowflake indicates I'm in presentation mode. So if I try to move this image around, it won't move. If you don't lock that image around or, or down, excuse me, um, anytime you click on the page, it could possibly move your um, things around. You don't want that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a place for my students to write their answer since in this particular page it doesn't have anything like that. So I'm going to go to the shape tool and I'm going to choose my horizontal line tool and I can choose a color um, if I like and my, I've already got black chosen. So I'm just going to draw in horizontal lines for where I want um, students to place their answers. Make sure you give your um, students plenty of room and um, sometimes when they're writing with the flip chart pen it gets a little tricky so like in particular these are a little close together so if I'm going to move those around I just get my select tool and I'm going to move grab this one and um, make it a little higher grab this bottom one and make it a little lower and I can even those out if I like to just by clicking on them and changing the length um, of the line. Once I have all of those in place, I'm just going to click and uh, drag so that I select all of those lines and I'm going to lock them down by hovering over one of the lines and click right clicking and then choosing locked. And now those lines won't move um, as long as I'm in presentation mode. Now I'm going to add the answers to the right of each of my blanks. Um, so I can just get my text box or my text tool here and it says how many of the students have six siblings, um, just one has six siblings. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to add my answer. To change the color of my um, font, I'm going to come up to the top. I want it to write in red and I want it to be a little bit bigger so I can um, hit the text um, larger button and it'll kind of grow my text there. So I just type in the number one and I can reposition that text. Once you have those answers in place, you're going to select all of them just by clicking and dragging so that um, your um, selection box uh, includes all of your answers. And I'm going to group them together. 
If I come up to the top of my bounding box here, I've got the marquee handles um, toolbar, and one of the selections is grouped. It's the fifth one over from the right. It's got two little squares together. As soon as I click on it and group those things together, you'll notice it turns yellow, indicating that these uh, answers have been grouped together. Um, from there, I can also right click on any of my numbers or my answers there, and I can select locked. That way they don't accidentally get moved by a student. Now that I've got those done, I'm ready to create the button that is going to um, hide or reveal the answers. So again, I'm going to use the text tool, and I want the background of my uh, uh, text to be red, um, and I want the foreground to be white. So the box on the left is your foreground, so I'm going to choose white. I want my font to be white, and this background, when it's got the X on it, your background color is clear, um, but I want the background color to be red. So I've got white and red chosen. Now I'm going to come down here to the bottom uh, left-hand corner, and I'm going to type in reveal answers. And I can make that box a little bigger if I want. I can also select all of my text and center it um, up here using the text tool at the top. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to get my select tool, which is the arrow tool. And I'm going to choose this item or click on it because I want it to be my button. And um, I'm going to add an action to it. To do that, I'm going to go to View and Browsers. And what I want to do is go to the Action Browser, which is the sixth browser from the left. It looks like a top. And I'm going to choose Current Selection. And it's saying I don't have anything selected right now, so if it says that, uh, just click on what you want to be the button, and then click the Current Selection tab. It'll, it'll become active then. Um, the action I want um, to um, work is the Hidden Action. So I'm going to choose it from the list, and if I come down to the bottom, it says target. What do you want to hide, basically? If I click the little button to the uh, right of the target area, um, once I click that, it pulls up a list of all of the objects and all of the groups on my page. Um, you'll see the only thing I have grouped on this page, if I click on it, are those numbers. It gives you a little preview of what that group is. So I'm going to choose my group because I want them all to appear all at the same time. And I'm going to hit OK. And you'll, you might think you're done, but you're not. There's one last thing to do here. I'm going to hit Apply Changes. Unless you hit Apply Changes, your action isn't actually going to work. So make sure you hit Apply Changes down at the bottom there. And from there, I'm going to add a couple more tools, drag and drop. Um, up here at the top, my drag and drop uh, tab, I'm going to add the Select tool just by dragging and releasing right on top there, on top of my Reveal tool or Reveal Answers. I might want to get the eraser. Um, another thing that's great is that reset page um, button. All right, now I'm going to close my browser. And because I'm in presentation mode, my action should work. So if I click the button, it's going to hide the answers. If I click my reveal answers button again, uh, it will either hide or reveal the answers. Um, it just toggles on, toggles off. So the, my page is all done, and all I have to do is um, file and save, and I've got an activity that my kids can use over and over.